Welcome to another useful video. Have you ever wanted to modify your headlights with some aftermarket projectors? If so, this is the video that you need to see. Stay tuned because this is going to be a super fun hey episode. Family, please subscribe to my channel and hit that bell icon so you'll be notified whenever I upload a new buyer's guide or repair guide. Thank you so much and enjoy this video. We're going to go over how you can get your headlights swapped to projectors in only 10 steps. Before we get started with any of the steps, we need to first think about what exactly we need to do this project. For me, that consisted of two glass Hella headlights, a full HID kit in H1 size bulbs with 4,300 Kelvin color, two 2.5 inch H1 mini projectors, and two chrome shrouds to give me that polished, finished look. Even though we're not gonna bake anything to eat, we are gonna bake these headlights. So we need to set the oven at 290 degrees Fahrenheit for around four to eight minutes. The amount of time will vary based on the sealant that your headlights use. The next step in the process is to remove the lens from the headlight housing. And I know what you might be thinking, how am I gonna get the lens off without damaging the headlight? Well, I'm here to tell you to have confidence and that you can do this. The way I approach this is I take a small screwdriver to the edge or the corner of the headlight and I apply small but steady pressure to certain points of the headlight. Once it starts to give a little bit, I grab it with my hand and separate the lens from the housing. If you take your time and be careful, you'll get the lens off just like I did and then you'll have direct access to the shroud, which we'll have to remove shortly. So again, I'll take the headlight and I'll look for a corner or any place where I feel where I can apply a steady amount of pressure without overdoing it so that the lens gives from the body. Once that happens, again, I'll grab the lens from a corner or edge and apply steady pressure with my hand to remove the lens from the housing. And I did this with both of the headlights and they both separated cleanly and nicely without damaging either the lens or the housing. At this point, we're going to need to remove the factory lens shroud. Now, this can be different based on the manufacturer and the headlight that you're working with. Some headlights have this bolted onto the back of the headlight so you can remove a couple of screws and it comes out. Mine was actually like laser or plastic welded to the housing of the headlight. So instead of using a Dremel or anything, I just gave it some pressure from edge to edge and it gave. Once it was removed, you can clearly tell why these headlights weren't outputting a lot of light. The reflector is corroded and rusty and it just doesn't look like it's going to give me the same type of output that a nice projector beam is going to. And then once you have that out, you'll notice that the opening for the headlight is ready to accept the projector. Because I'm installing bi-xenon projectors, they have a connector that's attached to a motor that controls a flap. And in order for that flap to work correctly, I need that wire to come out of the headlight housing so that I can connect it to the headlight's wiring. So in order to do that, I need to drill a hole into the headlight. I used a 3 8 inch drill bit followed by a smoothing drill bit that's made for plastic and or metal. This helped me to get a smooth finish and to also extend the hole a little bit. Now whenever you're drilling or working with power tools, please wear gloves, eye protection and a mask. You don't want anything going into your eyes or your lungs. Before we do anything else, we have to test out the HID kit to ensure that it works. You don't want to go through all this trouble just to find out that you have a hit kit that needs a replacement ballast or bulb. So to do this, I have a 12 volt bench tester that I installed and hooked up to the HID kit just to make sure that I have power and that the lights light up. The nice thing about these modern hit kits is that they're completely plug and play and the wiring is extremely simple. The bulb will have two connectors that attach to the ballast as well as one main connector which is the power trigger wire that goes into the ballast. After that, you simply have the two wires for the H1 bulb that you need to connect, which are a hot and a ground. And these are the two wires that I used on my bench tester to ensure that this hit kit worked properly and wasn't going to give me any problems 
once it was installed into the vehicle. And the really nice thing about these HID kits is that they've been on the market for quite a while. So at this point, the technology is pretty good and these bulbs get really bright. As you can tell, I got the 4300 Kelvin color temperature, which is supposed to be very close to natural daylight. In step six, we wanna install the shroud onto the projector. And I used a clear RTV silicone and adhesive to do this. And the reason that I use this type of silicone is that it has no deformation, a favorable amount of tension, light viscosity, good flowability, and high temperature resistance. And when something is in your headlights, you want the temperature resistance from cold to hot. And that's why I chose to go with this RTV. I applied it to the four corners of the shroud and then placed the projector into the shroud. Once that was done, I used the four screws that accompanied the projectors and made sure that they were tight. Next, you'll want to install the projector into the housing and the first part of the step is to remove the bulb holder on the back of the projector. It uses three screws which can get rounded off really easily so use the right bit. And also, pay close attention to where it says top on the projector. You'll want to make sure that the orientation is correct once it's in the headlight. Next, you'll want to get the big silicone washer that's included in the kit. You'll want to install that onto the back of the threaded portion of the projector. It's a really pliable material so that when we tighten down the projector, it'll make a nice solid and watertight seal. The kit also comes with different styles of projector holders so that they can match up with the size of the headlight bulb that's in your current headlights. I chose the 9004 size adapter. Next, I took the projector by Xenon wiring harness and I slid that through the hole that I drilled in the back of the headlights. Next, I fished out the line so that it's nice and tight and then proceeded to put the projector into place and make sure that it's seated correctly. When I did this, I made sure to give it a little bit of pressure to make sure that I'm gonna get a solid and tight seal with the silicone adapter in place. Once in place, I wiped down the projector shroud and the projector itself with a lint-free microfiber towel. I turned the headlight upside down and I placed the towel down on the work surface so that I could make sure the alignment of the projector within the headlight opening was solid and secure so that I could use the attaching nut to secure the projector to the headlight solidly. Once the nut is tight enough to hold the projector, we have to move on to adjusting the projector and the light output correctly and making sure that it's even. To do this, I held the projector with one hand and tightened the nut securely once I felt the location of the projector was correct in relation to the headlight. Next, I brought up my bench tester again and put the bulb inside the headlight. This is to ensure that I won't need to shim the bulb once installed. What I'm looking for is a nice, bright hot spot in the middle of the projector light output and I also want to make sure I have a sharp cutoff and that the light beam pattern is straight. These are all very important because if you don't get this step right, your headlights might not be bright enough and they might not even look good. My preliminary tests showed that I was happy with the light output and the cutoff. We're almost at the end of the project. Our steps now include inserting the bulb holder and the grommet for the bi-xenon wiring. To install the bulb holder, make sure that you use the correct screwdriver or bit so you don't round off the screws and use an alternating pattern on the screws. You want a solid but tight pressure on every screw and you don't want one screw to be tighter than the others. This is for the alignment of the bulb. Once complete, you want to install a grommet for the HID by Xenon wire harness. And the reason that I add a grommet is because I want a factory style finish and I want to keep any contaminants and moisture out of the headlight. Condensation could be very bad for the HID kit and all of my hard work. This step not only gives you a nice finish but also the confidence to know that your headlights are going to perform for you in any type of weather and for many years to come. Once complete, I do a final inspection of all my work and I do one last cleaning of the projector shroud and the housing of the headlight. We did it family, we're at step 10 of the project. 
and in this step we're going to reseal the headlights. But first, we need to clean the lens in and out and the housing in and out. We also want to test the bulb again to make sure that the hotspot and the alignment is correct. Hey, big shout out to Real Hella Parts made in Germany with a glass lens. Now we're going to test fit everything to make sure that it fits correct and it looks okay. Take your time with this step. This is the last step before you seal the lens back to the housing, so it's your final opportunity to make any adjustments, clean any fingerprints off, and make sure everything looks great. Once the assemblies are clean and you're ready to reseal, it's time to bring back the silicone RTV adhesive. This is again what I'm gonna use because it goes on easy and provides almost a factory-like finish to the seal and to the appearance of the headlight from the outside. I apply a solid amount of material to the perimeter of the light housing opening to make sure that everything is gonna get sealed properly and that no water or condensation can get into the headlight. Once I've done that, I carefully place the lens onto the housing and make sure that it's aligned. Note that this part can be pretty messy, so have some napkins, paper towels, or whatever you need to clean the surface and your housing with handy. I follow that up by putting a bead of material around the perimeter of the outside of the housing where the lens meets the body of the headlight. I find that this helps create an ultra tight seal and gives me a wonderful, almost factory look finish to the completed project. Once dry and finished, you can see that the seal made with this RTV silicone is really slick. It looks almost factory and provides a very nice watertight seal. If you do an even better job of applying it than I did, it'll even look better. Now I bench test it one last time to make sure that it works. Family, if you like this video, please subscribe and hit that like button. It would mean so much to me. Thanks for watching, have a wonderful day, and we'll see you for the next video.